will not sign the new partnership agreement between the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States and the European Union in its current form. We now cross over to Selima Henok, who will be speaking to social commentator Sim Kowapirura. Over to you, Selima. Thank, thank you, Salma. Good evening, Mr. Kawapirura, and welcome. Good evening, Selena, and thanks for having me. All right. Um, so firstly, would, uh, what do you make of Namibia's, Namibia's stance for not signing this agreement that goes against um, uh, its interest, best interest? I think international trade agreements are part of the, of, of the geopolitical order, and they pursue and protect particular interests. And those interests pretty much amount to the national interests of a particular state or country. So I'm sure Namibia's primary motivation for participating in these international trade agreements is to enhance opportunities uh, to advance its own national interest, while also recognizing the notion that we are part of the global village. But that should not come to the expense of uh, negating our own national interest. Now, Article 1 of the Namibian Constitution establishes the Republic of Namibia as a sovereign state. In other words, it's a state that is first and foremost inward-looking. It looks at its own national interest and it, and it ad advances them on the global menu of, of opportunities. So if one looks at the statement that the Honorable Minister for International Relations and Deputy Prime Minister made in, in Parliament, she clearly provided reasons that gave Namibia some concerns when uh, government looked at the provisions of this draft agreement. And because of those reasons, Namibia then preferred not to sign the agreement while those concerns are not adequately addressed and mitigated. And the minister did raise some specific concerns. Yes. So uh, maybe please just take us through uh, some of the concerns that the uh, Deputy Prime Minister mentioned that goes against the constitution of, of Namibia. Yes. So some of those concerns were, for example, the agreement lacks a provision that defines the glossary of terms used as well as a section on the, on the definitions. Now, if you pick any piece of legislation, it will always start with, uh, you know, the definitions. You know, this language used, this is what it means for the purposes of, 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 of the document. Now, if an agreement of that statute lacks those basic provisions, clearly it's a cause for concern. We know that Namibia holds a huge elephant population uh, because of probably because of our geographical um, um, location. And so, although we are a member of a UN body that protects, you know, dealing in protected wildlife and so forth, we do have a large stockpile of, uh, of, of, of ivory, elephant ivory, that is confiscated through illegal activities such as poaching and mortality and so forth. So that agreement also bars Namibia, for example, and all the countries to trade in, in, in that stockpile. It's not in our national interest to keep storing uh, you know, stockpiles of ivory and we can't sell it to use the money for, for developing the country. Uh, th there were also other provisions, for example, where a declaration section has been omitted where states state their declaration, how they interpret and understand the provisions of the agreement. All these things, if one combines them, they seem to be threatening the very character of a sovereign state because a sovereign state must first and foremost act in the interest of its own citizen, even within the context of the global order. So uh, there has been uh, discussions prior to uh, Nam Namibia deciding not to sign the agreement. Um, how possible is it to achieve uh, consensus, uh, consens consensus in such a large grouping, grouping with uh, diverse interests? Well, I think that's quite a challenge. If one looks at the, at the, at the ACP countries alone, there are about 79 different countries, African, Caribbean, and then Pacific states. 79. It's, I mean, imagine looking at the interests of 79 diverse nations with their own particular history, unique circumstances. It's not an easy fit. And that also tells, it also speaks to the whole volume of the document. It talks to the fine print. It talks to all the various sections. So it's, it's, it's quite a, a bulky document, uh, trying to capture all those interests, trying to harmonize them. It's not an easy fit. And um, lastly, just perhaps uh, the consequences that may come out of this if Namibia does not sign the agreement. Well, we've seen some, we've seen some ramifications before where countries were caught and bullied into 
uh, you know, especially smaller economies such as I was bullied into these agreements or threatened with all kinds of economic, uh, you know, ramifications and, and consequences. Namibia does have standalone agreements with some EU member nations and some other parts of the world. So I don't think uh, there would be direct consequences of an immediate nature that would threaten our daily lives. But clearly we want to be part of a long-standing arrangement that promotes trades, that enhances opportunities for our people. But it cannot happen at the expense of our people. Thank you so much for making time. Bye-bye. Back to you, Salva.